Good evening. Welcome to another Bible study here at Herkimer Baptist Church here on Wednesday night prayer meeting and Bible study. <coughs> Excuse me, we're talking about the we're in a study of the book of Acts here where this is part 57, lesson 57 in this study. And we're in chapter 17 tonight. I've been talking about Paul and his missionary trip, him and Silas. Remember, he's on his second missionary trip now. The first one he took uh, Barnabas with him. And when he got ready to start the second trip, uh, they had to dispute with John Mark whether to take him or not. So they split, and he's got Silas now. And they went to Philippi. And, of course, they got beaten in Philippi and thrown in jail. We've seen the Philippi jailer get saved. And we come on a little further, and he went on down to uh, Thessalonica, first part of chapter 17, and tells about what all Paul did. And we, as we look at this uh, mission trip, if you would, that Paul and, and Silas are on, and, and see what's happening to them. And, and we understand that the things that happened to the, the Christians back in that day and time, uh, how they were persecuted, and we see the persecution today. And uh, I just wonder sometimes, uh, it took a lot of courage. We don't often think about it. Uh, if you remember last uh, t last week when we was in the first part of this, chapter 17, and uh, I'm just going to back up. I want to read verses 5 to 9, just to kind of set a stage for this part. But uh, there at uh, Thessalonica, and we get down here to chapter 17, verse 5. But the people got saved, and here we're getting verse 5. But the Jews which believed not, moved with envy, took unto them certain lewd fellows of a baser sort, or they were loafers, remember what we talked about, and gathered a, a company and set all the city in, on an uproar. And they assaulted the house of Jason and sought to bring them out to the people. So they're looking for Paul and Silas, remember? Uh, they go to the house of Jason, they think they're there, so they go to the house, well, they're not there. And in verse 6 says, When they found, found them not, they drew Jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city. So there was whoever was there, Jason, plus the other ones were there. We don't know if, if Timothy was one of them or who all was there yet. But he drew those all out there. And they said that. They said, uh, uh, crying, These uh, that have returned the world upside down are come hither also. And so they're talking about Christianity and how that uh, everybody, there's a change between the Jews and the Gentiles and people are getting saved and it's recreating a stir in different ways in different towns. But he says, uh, whom Jason hath received and these all do contrary to the decrees of Caesar. Remember, Caesar is supposed to be a god, so he was the one, the only one they're supposed to worship, saying that there's another king, one Jesus. And uh, they troubled the people and the rulers of the city when they heard these things. And when they had taken security of Jason, in other words, they held Jason. He, Jason was going to have to stay there. And of others, they let them go. So they kept Jason at the house there. And, and you know that if anybody, if Paul or Silas, or anybody showed up, he was probably supposed to let them know about it and uh, to turn them in. But they let the, the others go. And so we stop and think about the courage that these people had to have uh, to be, be willing to go through what they went through. I... I uh, I get involved a lot of times with the voice of the martyrs, and I just got a, a, a magazine from them today. They come out with a monthly thing, stories about people that around the world that are suffering for their faith, Christians that are, are being persecuted, and this, this lady that they have uh, featured on the front page here today, uh, her and her husband started a church and, uh, over in India, and uh, they started this church, and uh, they went. To, he was in it for like 10 years, they had this church going. And, uh, and back in 2018, uh, he was out, him and a guy driving him around in a Jeep, and, and uh, he didn't come home. And uh, they, uh, they checked around, she couldn't find him, and he wasn't home by 8 o'clock that night, so she sent her son out to see if she could find him, and he heard that there was a Jeep down by the bridge you know, on this road, so he went down there. When he got down there, the Jeep was on fire. And, of course, he understood that what was going on, that uh, there's some, some people were around her intending to do harm, so he, he left and went back home. And uh, the next day they went down and they found her husband there, uh, and uh, the driver, they had let the driver go, uh, but, they, but him they decapitated and uh, left him there with the burning Jeep, and uh, that was in 2018, and the, the lady is still there, and she's carrying on the ministry that her husband, start, her and her husband started uh, back in uh, early, I guess it would have been early in 20, 2010, something like that, or earlier. But, the idea is, would you, would you have that courage to carry on the work? You know, if um, we read a lot of times about that in uh, the Holocaust, how the Jews, how people help hide the Jews, and uh, over in uh, Iraq and Iran and the, those places, how people try to protect the Christians uh, from some persecution. And So if, if you was to ask to help some other person, 
at the risk of imprisonment or your own life, would you be willing to do it? Another Christian, I should say a person, another Christian, uh, would you have the courage to do that, to take a stand and say, you know what, I, I'll, I'll face it, I don't care what it is we see t uh, today, and, and in fact, uh, it's going to be more and more in our nation. They've seen an attempt at it down in Texas a few years ago when, when the uh, mayor down there wanted to see the, the, the sermons before the preachers could preach it. But, uh, and we know in a place like in, even in Canada and in, in England, uh, there's certain things you can't preach about. There's certain things you can't talk about without facing persecution. And we know that uh, uh, laws are meant to be obeyed by us uh, as Christians. We're, we live in a civil society, so uh, a just law we're to obey. But when it comes time to uh, a law that violates the scripture, like not preaching the Bible, then we need to uh, take a stand. And so the idea is, well, we have that, that courage someday to stand there and uh, uh, do what's right uh, according to the Word of God. Let's go on down here to, to verse number 10. And uh, the brethren immediately now sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea. So they, uh, they know what was going on. And so they, when they, Paul and Silas came back to the house or however it worked out, they got in touch with them. They said, you know what, you need to get out of here. And it, it, it's not for their life, their physical life that they fear for. It's the ministry. See, what happens if Paul and Silas were both uh, taken and thrown in jail or even, even martyred? Right there within, so what happens to the ministry? Well, the ministry, as far as those two, is going to stop. And whether anybody else picks it up, uh, just like this lady I talked about, when, when her husband's killed, she picked up the ministry and she kept on going. Uh, sometimes that happens, sometimes it don't. Uh, sometimes people get so scared that the church, just, that local church just dies out and it's not uh, effective anymore. So... We want to see here, they said that uh, they took those two men and they got them out of there uh, for the furtherance of the gospel, if you would. They want to go out and they're going to continue on. And then they, they're going to, to Berea. They're leaving uh, Thessalonica and they're going to Berea. And it says here, who, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. Now that's just where they was having a problem before. But if you remember Paul uh, in, in his way, he goes to the, to the Jews first goes to the synagogue where the Jews are because those are the people that understand the Bible. They have the Old Testament. They all understand the Old Testament. And so they're more open into discussion. And so he goes to them and then he goes to the believing Gentiles and then he goes out to the streets uh, to witness the, the former's church. And so he goes to the synagogue of the Jews, those that had been giving, giving him trouble as they left us for night in different places. They go from one place to the other. They kind of want to follow him around. They want him to stop. They're trying to get, him, get rid of him. And, but Paul just keeps kind of one jump ahead of him. And that's how the brothers are working. So he's going to the synagogue of the Jews in Berea. So we see how these, how these people are there now. They're going to uh, see how they receive him. So let's go to verse 11. He says, uh, these were more noble. Okay, he's at Berea. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica. And that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether, whether those things were so. So the difference here we see between the, the two, he says they were more, no, more noble. Uh, when the idea of noble means they're, they're more lifted up, maybe they're more spiritually uh, receptive, because he, he mentions that there, he says, but uh, they received the work with all readiness of mind, and then they went ahead and searched, searched the scripture. So uh, the readiness of mind has the idea that they were eager. Uh, they were, hey, I'm, I'm sitting there, I'm like a dry sponge, and you're going to pour the water of the word on me, and I'm just going to soak it up. They're hungry, they're thirsty to know the truth. And so that's what they're doing. They're, their mind is prepared. They want to hear what the word has. They receive the word. That's, okay, that's the word of God. It's not Paul's word or Silas. They're out here preaching and teaching the gospel, preaching and teaching the word of God, what man must do to be saved. And so they're, the people at Berea, they're hearing this, and they're receiving it. They have the idea. They want to know the truth. And so what they do, they heard what Paul had to say and Silas had to say. Okay, Paul, mostly we think about Paul doing the preaching. And then they searched the scriptures daily. Okay, it, was, it wasn't a, a, a Wednesday night Bible study and that's all they had to do with the Bible. And so when we look at it, he said they searched the scriptures. And uh, Jeremiah 29, 13 says this. He says, and, and ye shall seek me and you'll find me. When, when are you going to find the Lord? when you shall search for me with all your heart. And so that's, that gets back to what we was talking about earlier, that, that eagerness, that hunger, that thirst for the Word of God. When you hear the Word of God, and it, I know as a, as a young Christian, when I first got, uh, I got saved and I started getting into the Bible, 
and I, I knew about the Bible. I knew I knew the books of the Bible. I'd been in Sunday school some years earlier, and, but I really didn't know the Bible. I didn't, and I, through the Word of God and the Spirit of God, it, it, it came alive, and you just had that hunger for the Word. You want to get more, and that's kind of how they were at a Berea. They heard Paul preaching, and they he'd come in there, and right away, boy, that's, this sounds good. This is good stuff, this guy's saying it. And so when they come to know Christ as their Savior, and he's talking all about what the life as a Christian, and, and they see these things happen, they feel the Spirit of God moving, and so they they search they get the, they want the truth, so they search the scriptures daily again to get back to their the persistence. It's not a, uh, a once a week or you know kind of a five minute study in the morning or whatever. They, daily they're searching the scripture. Paul is teaching. Paul is preaching. Silas is teaching and preaching. They're all doing their part. And so what they want to do says you know what, is it true? Is what they're telling me true? They're they're they're. Daily, they're committed to finding the truth. They're committed to want, want to know what the truth is. And I want to tell you, we live in a world today, okay, and there, there are quote unquote churches. Now, the true church is born again Christians. The true church is made up of born again Christians. And it's not a building, it's not a denomination. It's a, a group of born again Christians that make up the church. But the idea is we have a lot of church buildings. We have a lot of people that come to a church building and uh, they're not hearing the truth and they're not they're not going home and studying searching the scriptures you know when you, if you was to go to a, a, a church say you was to attend our church on Sunday morning and you hear two different uh, thoughts about the, the security of the believer okay so what, what do you do how, how do you know the truth the truth is you go to the Word of God you go to the Word of God study get into the Word of God and study it search the Word of God for what you for the answer you're looking for is this true or is that true? Is uh, uh, faith in Christ plus baptism necessary for salvation or is faith in Christ and Christ alone necessary for salvation? What, what is the truth? And so where do I find the truth? It's not through the preacher. The preacher may be able to help me find scripture, but his scripture is going to point to what he was wanting you to see. So I go to the scripture and I see what the Bible has to say about what, what I'm wanting to know about. It. Is the preacher, the teacher telling me the truth? See, the preacher, the teacher, so many times, so many, many times, people that are, are born into a, a family that goes to church, goes to a certain denomination, and they're brought up that way. They hear that teaching, they hear that preaching, they're taught that in Sunday school, and they see mom and dad, if they're faithful church members, they go to church all the time, and we see them trying to reinforce what the church is doing. Okay, it's not that they're not a family that's trying to honor God. If they're not getting the truth, then what they're doing is they're going the wrong way. They're following a false doctrine, and believe me, there are false doctrines that send people to hell. If you take, if you have the wrong attitude, if you have the wrong understanding, no matter how great your faith is in that wrong understanding, no matter how sincere you are, if it's not the true gospel of Jesus Christ, you're condemned. You're not saved. That's why it's so. It's, it's so, um, I don't know the word I'm looking for, challenging, uh, a feeling of desperation. Because Jesus talks about that in the Sermon on the Mount. He says that many will say to me in that day, day, Lord, Lord, look, I went to church. I was baptized. I took communion. I did all those things. And he said, but I didn't know you. You wasn't trusting in me and me alone. You was trusting in, in your works. You was trusting in your ability to stay saved. You was trusting in your baptism, your communion. You was trusting in other things beside me. And he said, I am the only way. Paul says over in Galatians chapter 1, there's no other gospel. There's only one gospel. There can only be one truth. There can be only one biblical truth. There's only one truth. And when it comes to the plan of salvation, there are more. And so the people of Berea, that's what they did. And that's what we're failing to do today. And I think that's why we have so many young people, when they go off to college, uh, they don't know. And so they're swayed to and fro. These, these professors get in there and they, they teach a false doctrine. They, they mislead the students. They're not necessarily teaching the Bible, but what they're doing, they're taking the, the understanding of the Word of God and they're twisting it. They're making things like uh, the homosexual movement, making it seem more acceptable, making it seem more normal. And making abortion seem different than it is. It's contrary to the Word of God. So we need to know what the Bible says. And so how do I do that? I hear these different stories. I hear this professor say that, and I hear this preacher say that, or whatever. I go to the Bible. I go to the Word of God, and I read the Word of God. What does it say? That is what I want. That is the truth. And so that's when we just get here, and that's why I'm spending some time right here. Uh, that's what the Church of Berea did, and that's what all Christians should do. 
All Christians should study the Word of God, know what you believe and why you believe it. So when somebody comes up and says, this is okay, you can say, no, not according to the Word of God, it's not okay. The, the, the culture I live in today, this cancel culture, or woke culture, or whatever all these things are they talk about, whatever that is, that, that's one thing, but, but that's not what God says. So it's not what man says, it's what God says. When it comes to the plan of salvation, I, I say this many times in the invitation, it's not the, the Baptist way, it's not the Methodist way, it's not the Presbyterian way, it's not the Catholic way, it's not anybody's way, it's God's way and it's what's in the Bible. And if your way, we believe that the Baptist way is the right way, it's the biblical way, what we're teaching and preaching is the biblical way of salvation according to the scriptures. And I can go to the scriptures and validate what I'm trying to uh, point out to you, what I'm trying to bring you to. And that's what, when you go to the Bible and you search it and you find out, yes, this is truth. This is what the Bible says. And I understand there's areas that we don't fully understand. But when it comes to salvation, it is clear. When it comes to your relationship with God the Father through Christ the Son, it's clear. When it comes to your relationship with God and your fellowship with God after you're saved, it's clear. And all these other things that we can talk about, and uh, I won't get into them because it's sometimes they're controversial and I don't want anybody to get the idea that, that uh, I'm just promoting any certain thing. And what I'm telling you is when it comes to those areas, when it comes to those areas, it's clear. You can bet on it. You can put your money on it if you want to use that kind of term. But the idea is that what God says is true. So when you don't understand something, when somebody says something that you're not taught, it, you may have been taught wrong and they may be telling you right. Say, go to the scripture. If you have a question about it, go to, in fact, even if your preacher is saying something and you agree with it, go to the scripture and find out where it says that, that it validates what he's telling you. So you can, when, you, when you're faced with a challenge, you can say, here's what the Bible says. So when we go a little bit farther, it says here that they did it daily to find the truth. Okay, then we see here, uh, going down a little further in verse number 12, Run out of time. He said, therefore, many of them believed also of honorable women, which were Greeks and of men, and not a few. So they heard the word of God. Therefore, many of them believed to put their faith and trust in Christ. They believed him. John 8, 31 says, Then Jesus said to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. If you continue in my word, if you continue to walk in my word, if you live in my word, then you're my disciples. John 16, 13, Howbeit when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. So we see that there's the truth in the Word of God. The Spirit of God, when you study the Word of God and you pray about it, God is going to reveal His truth to you. He's going to answer your questions. He's going to show you in His Word what the answer to your question. So He says there, But when the Jews of Thessalonica had knowledge that the Word of God was preached at Paul, at Paul at Berea, they came thither also and stirred up the people. Here they come, the troublemakers. And listen, that's the problem with Christianity. See, the problem with Christianity is... Uh, we're a people of peace. We preach love. We pe we pray. We preach peace. We preach obedience to government. We preach of uh, loving your brother. We preach of helping others. We preach and so and what's wrong with any of that? What is wrong with any of that? And that's what they're Paul and Silas and they're, they're preaching. They're bringing people to Christ and they're giving them the fruit of the spirit through the faith and trust in Christ. And and here come those those legalists, those religionists. Those that say, you know what, that's not enough. you got to do more than that. It's not just by faith. Remember what they said earlier. They said, you know, Paul went up and said, here's what I'm preaching. He said, yeah, you're preaching right, and here's what they need to do after that. They, when they had the Council of Jerusalem, they didn't talk about getting saved there. They said, this is how you live after you're saved. This is an evidence of your salvation. This is how you show the world that you're a Christian. So we'll get to that part. He says here, uh, immediately, here they come again, and immediately, again, the brethren sent away Paul to go, as it were, to the sea, but Silas and Timotheus abode there still. So they said, Paul, you need to get out of here. You get on down to the sea. Silas and Timmy, Timothy, Timotheus, they're here. Timothy, you can, you can stay here. And they that conducted Paul brought him unto Athens. Here they, they, sent a, they sent an escort. They sent some men that went all the way from Berea to to Athens with Paul and brought him unto Athens and receiving commandment unto Silas and Timotheus for to come to him with all speed they departed. So what Paul said, hey, go back and tell uh, Silas and Timothy, come on down. And then we're going to see next week we'll be looking at Paul at Athens and that's a good, that's a good uh, 
little testimony of Paul, how he looked at the situation around him, and he, he didn't get, um, what do I want to say, he didn't get complacent. Oh, hey, I'll just sit here and wait for, for Silas and, and Timothy to get down here, and, and we'll lay out our plans, and we'll go from there. No, Paul, he said, I'm waiting. i got work to do while I'm waiting, and he, he got in and started doing that work. So that's, we're going to close right there for today, and we'll pick up Paul next weekend at Athens. It's for you today, if you don't know Christ as your Savior, this is the day to repent, turn and put your faith and trust in Jesus. Trusting His shed blood, it paid for your sins. It gave, through His shed blood, you have forgiveness of sins. And if you're a Christian, get into the Bible. Listen, be like the people of Berea. Get in and search the Scriptures. you got questions about the Bible, and it's nothing wrong. I'd, I'd love to have people come to me and ask questions. I have no problem trying to answer questions and go to the Bible and show them as best I can where the answers to their questions are. But, you know, get, get into it yourself, too, and, and study. Dig it out. If you have a study Bible, commentaries, all these things are tools that you can use to get a better understanding of the Word of God. And that's where you need to be. But the more you know about it, the more you enjoy it, the more fed you are by it, and you just have, you have all that fruit, the love, the joy, the peace, all those things coming, come from knowing who God is and what He's at work in our lives and how He's doing it. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank You for this day and for this time. We just pray You be with each one of us that we would be a blessing to each other, Lord, and that those that don't know for sure that they're saved even, give them the ability to get into the Scriptures and search it out and find out truly if they are or they're not saved, Father. For those that don't know Christ, we pray this would be the day that they would turn and put their faith and trust in Jesus. We just pray, Lord, as we walk through this pathway of life, that we'll stay close to you through your Spirit and by studying your Word. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for what you've done. And, Lord, as we see the days ahead, we thank you for what you're going to do. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Twenty-one point five.